Hey guys, welcome to Church Chats with Lauren. And Luke. <laughs> um, we are, well, I am very excited for this person. Are you excited? I am. There's, is, yeah. there's been a few announcements about this one yeah, over the last know. couple of weeks. And uh, let's just say they're a bit of a hot shot. Big name, yes. celebrity. Big deal, big deal. So I hope you enjoy it because I definitely will. Um, but before we begin, Luke, do you have something to say? Yes, I do. Guys, I thought instead of just like Lauren and I chatting about what we've been up to, I thought we should get someone who, he's, it is a he, um, it hasn't necessarily had too much airtime in terms of being on screen, but has done arguably more work for the church in the last six months or so than anyone else. And, and before you continue, sorry, I just want yes. to say he's been here at the church since 6.30. Exactly right. So That's are, a long time. We are filming. It's a Sunday here. And... Um, this person once again has been here all day he's here for worship he's here for sound and audio and the live stream setting up the stage for church chat setting up the stage for the speakers there's an endless list of stuff that this person does and he won't like that i'm getting him on stage right now <laughs> but daniel Foltus, can you come up here for a second Woo! mate yes, give him a cheer give him some love <laughs> in the comments guys but um dan good to see you <laughs> Um, I feel like the people at home don't get to see you as much as those of us who are anchoring or doing other roles in the church. So um, thank you. For this is the big man who does everything. He does. He does a little bit <laughs> of everything. Um, so, guys, next time you see Dan, whether it's on Zoom or in person, whenever that might be, give him some love. Um, if it wasn't for Dan, a lot of our online services and things wouldn't have been happening. So, Dan, just wanted to appreciate you. And um, let you know that we love you. And uh, you don't. Do you want to say anything to the people? I um, also want to give a huge shout out to Sean Creek. He yes. does a lot of it as well. It probably would have been possible without me. So shout out to Sean. But also shout out to you two guys. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. You can go. Thanks. So uh, thank you to Sean and Dan massively um, for all your work. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Hey, Lucy. You can hear us, okay? I can hear you and hey. see your beautiful faces. <laughs> it's so good to have you on. Thank you so much for yeah coming on board and chatting to us. Oh, I'm pumped. <laughs> I'm really excited. It's a good way to spend the afternoon. Yeah, so for those who don't know Lucy, she is um, a radio host from 89.9 The Light. So a big deal. And um, so for those who don't really know who you are or I guess your role, can you tell us a little bit about yeah what you do and your typical day? Yep. So I have been the breakfast host on the light for next year's my 13th year, which is so bizarre. I feel like I just started. So 13 years on Brecky Radio. Um, the light is a Christian radio station, but it's a mixed format. So it's about playing some really great, really positive music. You'll hear Beyonce, Justin Bieber, U2. And then you'll also hear some really great, you know, Newsboys tracks and awesome tracks from overseas and local artists. And the whole mission of The Light is to be a positive force in the community. So using the word of God and messages of hope, but just being a real huge, I like to say, big table where everybody's welcome, no matter who they are, what they believe, what they've done, they can come and listen to The Light, never feel ostracized, never feel condemned, but walk away feeling hopeful and feeling like they've got a future and a purpose and so that's why I love the mission of the light because it's really inclusive and it's out there reaching I think now 1.2 million listeners is how many we have every wow. month which is massive seriously that's incredible I, I'm one of my clearest memories we used to it takes 40 minutes to drive to school when I was in like what grade six I just clearly so remember we always listened to yeah light FM back in the day it was light FM um yeah it was just so it was just a great way to start the day. I just loved it. But um, um, I have a question. I've been really curious about this. How how do you do those days when you wake up feeling just flat or like not up to it? Like how do you always sound so energized and alive when you just when you're just not keen to start the day <laughs> like that? And does it always? Is it actually always what it seems on the radio? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. One of the things that I have going for me is I'm generally a really positive, perky person. So I'm, I, it's not a battle for me to do that. And those days where I am low, and it does happen, you know, and I've spoken a lot over the last year of my life, I've been going through some stuff, and I've actually had a bit of a battle with anxiety and depression. And it's been really interesting to be authentic and real on air, but not also come on air every morning and be so miserable that everybody turns off. But I have found that it's been such 
such a, a healing tool for me because I come on air and I have to rise because I know that there are people out there depending on me to wake them up in a positive frame of mind. And it's that really that amazing saying, you know, you rise by lifting others. And so I feel like it's been really healing for me because it's forced me every morning to go, you know, what, what is the positive today? What am I grateful for? You know, and so that's really uh, one of the easy things to do. So even when I'm low, I feel like I've got a real responsibility to be, you know, positive for people. And, you know, the days where I am really super low, like flat as a tack, I've got a great team who lift me. And, and sometimes I'll come on air and I'll be like, I'm struggling today. And people are very gracious and generous. And if like, if the wheels have all fallen off and I'm at the end of it all, like, I think I've had like one mental health day in the last four years. I just was like, I can't, I cannot do today. And my workplace is amazing. And so if the days it's too hard, then there's a great safety net there. Yeah, and even um, extending from that, my mother-in-law listens to you guys probably every morning and she she said to me, she just loves your transparency and your honesty. Like you just go on just being real and yourself, which I think is really cool. So yeah, and um, yeah, kind of expanding on that as well. What is it like being there at 6 a.m. in the morning? Uh, is it really that alive? Are people, you know, tired? Like what is it like really? Look, we, um, it's, We've always said doing brekkie radio is like being permanently jet lagged. Like you're always tired. It's just, it is the nature of the beast. You get up at like 4.30, you're in the station by about 5 or 5.30 and then you're on air. The, the benefit is like you do your work in the first half of the day. So you have your days free. So I, I really enjoy that part. It kills your social life because you're in bed at 8 p.m. every single night. But when we get there in the morning, everyone's a bit tired. Someone in our team does a coffee run. We take it in turns every morning. Someone brings in all the coffee. So we have proper nice coffees. And the great thing is because my team and I are such great mates, we all just make each other laugh. So if anyone's tired, you instantly kind of, you snap out of it and you start laughing and then you're into your working day. I guess the benefit in radio compared to TV is that, I mean, I don't know if it happens or not, but you could just turn up in your PJs and it wouldn't necessarily matter. Um, <laughs> does that happen out of curiosity? I have gone into my pajamas probably twice in 13 years and that was really fun but because we're there by ourselves by the time we come off air pre-COVID normal working life you come out to the office and there's 40 staff there so you can't just be slumming around in PJs at the moment our offices are closed so none of the office staff are in there everyone is broadcasting from home and has been but Brecky has just been allowed back in the building so we literally are in the building by ourselves every single day and so we we all just rock up in trackies now and and we, it's pretty it's pretty casual at the moment because no one's around. Yeah, so COVID has been a bit of a curveball for probably all of people all of all of the people in Melbourne. Um what do you believe, you know, the message is for people in Melbourne that God's been wanting you to deliver? That's a really good one and it's a hard one because Working in Christian radio and broadcasting to lots of different Christians with lots of different ideas about what's going on. Um, some people are very vocal thinking that it's the, you know, the work of the devil. And then there'll be other Christians with completely different views. Some people will think it's a conspiracy. Some people just go, no, it's just a pandemic. And all these people still have God in the center of their lives, but believe different things. And when you broadcast to 1.2 million people, you hear a lot of these different opinions especially when people can contact you on socials very easily um everyone has believes different things about what's going on at the moment but for me it always comes back to what is god's message for us all and that is love god is love and i think during this time regardless of all the background noise we don't truly know what's going on we don't really know what's happened we don't know where it came from was it x was it y who knows but what i do know is that god is love he's with me through the trials and the tribulations and that when we walk through these kind of things he's with us giving us what we need in that moment and so i think for me it's just been about reminding people that as tough as it is right now we don't have the answers but what we can do is just relax into god's love relax into his peace that surpasses all understanding relax into his grace when we're feeling stressed when we're feeling anxious when our mental health is rock bottom because we've all been locked in our homes for a year we can still connect to the source of all hope and encouragement and that's god and i think that's such a basic message we get so we get so confused by so much going on I think sometimes we just need to stop and go you know what it's just about me and God and that connection and so I think it's as simple and as complicated as that 
I love that. I feel like so frequently throughout the COVID season, like we've been forced to just step back and stop. And particularly as a Christian, like you, I mean, church has been taken in a physical sense for now, but you've still got your faith. And that's the one constant thing that is there, which has been really, really cool. So um, next question. I know that like, obviously, yeah, 13 years, you will have seen a whole bunch of stuff, a lot of changes throughout Melbourne. Um, and just in the Light FM studio. Um, but have you seen, like, what have some of those changes been? Like, have you seen a shift in the people of Melbourne over that time period? And what sort of things have you seen? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think I have. I think there has been a lot of change in that 13 years. I mean, it's, it's this sounds going to make me sound so old, but when I started at the Light, it was like social media wasn't even a massive thing. Like everybody was just, you know, starting to get maybe the odd Facebook. I like Instagram wasn't a thing. TikTok wasn't a thing. And so it was a very different kind of world how people found information, disseminated information. And now, you know, nearly two decades down the track, so much of our lives are all intermeshed with technology as well. And so I think that's been one of the great parts is people used to just have to ring our show during the show to con- contact us. And now they can Facebook me, they can tweet me, they can Instagram me, they can, you know, do a million different ways to have dialogue and, and connect and talk about things. And so I think that's made the people of Melbourne, especially the listeners of Melbourne, a lot more connected to the station and the message because it is really all in one right now it's not just a radio station you click on there's so many different things you can do now to be a part of the station so I have seen a lot more connection that way I think people um I'm hoping that people are turning into better versions of themselves um (laughs) I think COVID has made us all slow down a bit and remember what is truly important and to be grateful for the small things so I'm always an optimist I'm an eternal optimist so I like to think that we're all becoming you know better versions of ourselves kinder more compassionate more caring trying to realize that the church is about opening the doors and letting people in not shutting them and saying you've got to have a special card to get in that's you know the white evangelical card and that's it and if you're not following that there's no room like I feel like churches are a lot more like come to me you're broken you're weary whoever you are whatever you've done you'll find place here because god loves you so i'm hoping that's where we're heading totally me too um i think yeah we're all hopeful for that uh, i guess you've touched on it a lot through some of your answers but if there has there been anything specifically that through this season you feel like god's been um either challenging you but teaching you through the covid season and I guess with that, has there been a particular piece of scripture that maybe you've been holding on to? I um, I think for me, I have lived a really busy life. Like for 20 years, I've been touring as a performer, as a singer as well on a stage show. I have done a lot of MC work, speaking work. I've done acting work. I've done modeling work. I've done I think I've, I've done everything and I, I filled my schedule for nearly 20 years. I was always on the road. If I wasn't on radio, I'd be touring that weekend interstate overseas. I'd come back and I'd go back to radio. And I just thought that's how it had to be. And I thought that there was a lot of pride in being busy. Like, I'm so busy. How great. I'm so busy. Um, and it's just a lie. It's this, this, this awful empty lie that being busy means you're going to be happy. And I think I really burnt out. And so for me, COVID has forced me to stop and do nothing but sit at home. And that has been so beautiful for me. I've needed that for my mental health, just to slow down and enjoy the small things, just blob on the couch with my daughter without feeling guilty. I had a lot of guilt. You know, if I ever stopped, I'd feel guilty. I'm like, I'm not working. I'm not doing something. And so now it's great just to stop and just sit in the backyard and play with my puppy or lie on the couch and watch a movie. For me, that was a really big revelation and COVID's made me slow down. So that's probably been my best my best tip for the last few months. Um, and the scripture, I think for me, it's always, it always comes back to something like Jeremiah 29, 11, you know, about God giving you a purpose in a future. And so at the moment when there's so much um, worry about what's going on, what is it to know that God's got my future in his hand, even though right now the world seems like it's lost its mind. I know that God is with me in that and he does have a great destiny for me. 
that's awesome. I think that we need those little reminders on a daily basis at the moment, so even whether it's writing things down. I know that that's the way, you know, for me to reflect and see a verse that's written there each morning or whatever it is, um, is always a helpful technique. We also reached out to a couple of our congregation members throughout the week and mentioned that we would be chatting to. And one of the questions that we got um, asked that we, they would like to ask is, has there been any specific sort of defining moments, I guess, in your life that have, um, you know, in within your faith journey um, that have sort of helped shape you and your relationship with God? Oh, that's, that's such a big one. There's probably so many if I was to stop and think about those moments that define my faith. Um, the probably the two, the two biggest moments I can think of that come to mind, and I, I will try and keep them short because I can talk also. I, I can just keep going and you'll like be here for three hours and you'll be like, shut up. Um, but the, the two are every year I get to go overseas with CBM to the developing world and we get to go raise money and witness cataract operations in the poorest regions in the world. And I've been to, I've been overseas five or six times to the poorest places in the planet and that is absolutely so eye-opening and I come back every single time changed um, because it really just shows me how incredibly blessed and lucky we are over here and the things we whinge and worry about are just the people over like last year in Nepal in the poorest part of Nepal they have nothing absolutely nothing these people are coming from um, you know living in the dirt in the squalor completely blind and are so thankful that someone has donated 30 bucks so they can see 30 bucks to them is millions 30 bucks to us is a couple of you know macca's meals takeaway and so for me i truly see god's heart when i go overseas and i come back and i'm like you know what are we what are we putting our time and energy here into australia when there's so much suffering and what does god want me to do you know and so that's always a big part of my faith is thinking about social justice now that's been really big and the other thing that happened is years ago there was a little girl who was donating her money to the light to an appeal because we're a community station people wanted to stay on air they have to give and this little girl gave all their pocket money she was eight at the time and she had uh blood cancer i think she had leukemia and she gave away all her pocket money because the light is what kept her going through all her hospital visits. And we kept in touch with her. She was a beautiful girl called Abby. She got sicker and sicker until we heard that she had a bucket list of a few things left to do and she knew she was not going to make it. And she has, she was so faithful and she was going, you know what, I know it wasn't that she didn't have faith she was going to be healed, but she just was ready to go home to God. And one of her bucket list things was to come and play Shopkins with me and my co-host um, and sitting there at a table playing Shopkins with a little girl who was about to die, and that was one of her last wishes, just freaking broke me as a person. Like I just, I still think of that moment. That was years ago, and that is still, I still talk about it, and I get emotional and I get goosebumps because she had the most incredible outlook on life. And she taught me more about love and grace and seizing the day than anybody else. She had so much incredible faith in God. She just was ready to go and she wanted to leave her mark, do the things she wanted to do and then go and be with God. And I will never forget that girl. And that was probably one of the things that also made me realize the power of radio and the power of connection and the power of speaking God's word and love out over Melbourne. Wow, that's so good. Thank you for your vulnerability and your openness and sharing some of that stuff. I know that um, what you're touching on about, you know, going overseas as well, that's kind of relevant from what we heard in our sermon this week. And it is a, we live in such a privileged country and you can't, you can't go through that sort of thing and have those experiences and not be changed, um, yeah. not, not want to improve on yourself and, and give more. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Super timely. Can I just ask a question? This isn't on the script, but... Um, you're obviously, yeah, been around the world, basically like entertaining, etc. How is it, yeah, being a Christian in that industry? Because it's a tough industry. Well, from my perspective, to be a Christian, yeah, how do you find that? Um, I think the light shines brightest in the darkness, and I think that's where I want to be. A lot of people used to go to me, "Oh, you, 
because I'm a singer. They're like, are you a worship leader? And I'm like, I'm not a worship leader. They're like, but you're a singer. I said, yep, but I'm not a worship leader because God hasn't called me to that. I've been called into the arts industry and that's where I love being. And I love getting to love people, meet people of all different backgrounds. And I love it when they go, you're a Christian? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, but you're so lovely. You know, you're not judgmental. You don't hate us. And I'm like, why would I? Like that's, I'm so sorry you've met Christians that hate you. I'm really sorry. They're giving God a really bad rap. And so for me, it's a real privilege to go into the arts industry and just be joy and light and just show them a glimpse of the living God and not come with a message of condemnation, but to come and just bring the light into the dark. So for me, it's not a hard industry to be in. And surprisingly, the industry in Australia actually isn't that dark. It's actually quite amazing. The people in there are so hungry and most of them are so spiritual already looking, hunger, hungering for something more. So the conversations you can have, they're ready for it because they it's really in tune with who they are because they're performers, you know? So it's actually, I've met some of my best friends in this industry, some of the most incredible people who don't love God, don't know God, but are some of the most incredible people. So it's actually a really fun, exciting industry to be a part of because it's very vibrant and it's full of amazing people, especially here in Australia. That's amazing. Cool. Love that. Hey, we're just going to change pace slightly, Lucy. We have a few questions, some rapid fire questions for you. And uh, essentially what we want is you to give us either a one word answer or if that's not possible, as quick an answer as you can based off whatever's on your mind. So we're going to get through these pretty quickly. So for starting us off, what is your pet peeve? Um, being rude, nasty, rude people. Um, what is one thing that is on your bucket list? To walk the Camino de Santiago, the that walk through Spain that takes a few months. It's beautiful. Are you a morning or a night person? I used to be a night person and then 13 years of radio have turned me into a morning person. What is the one thing that annoys you the most? Um, people who can't own up to their own stuff and apologise. Where would you go if you were invisible? Oh, um, oh the White House. <laughs> I love that. That's cool. Um, what is the one thing you can never live without? Um, ooh, uh, lipstick. <laughs> what is one of your strangest quirks? Ah, oh, strange quirk. Um. I am a really fantastic whistler and actually this is stranger. I have amazing feet and I was a foot model for a while. So okay, I feel like we need to stop things there just for a second. Can you yeah. elaborate on the foot model a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Like I was like, I modeled shoes for a shoe company for a few years and they used to pay me in the shoes and they were all these amazing Italian leather shoes. And at one point I wow. had, I think 400 pairs of shoes in my closet and it just got out of hand. So I just was giving bags of shoes to friends with my size because I had no room for these 400 pairs of shoes. So what? That is a dream job. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, Lauren's like, this is a dream. Can I get in somehow? Yeah. Like, can you give me a connection? Or... <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to our questions. Where um, were we? Yeah, so what is what is the one thing you're most afraid of? Oh, that's, oh, that's such a big one. Do you want a serious answer or a silly answer? I'll give you a silly answer. I'm terrified of snakes. Yeah, relatable. If you could swim in any liquid and it wouldn't damage you of any kind, what would it be? Champagne. <laughs> I love that. And lastly, um, please show us your Kylie Minogue impersonation and maybe yeah, even just sing a part of a song for us. <laughs> We've heard that you may do a little Kylie Minogue here and there. So, Oh, a little. I've toured the world as Kylie for 21 awesome. years in a stage show and I've been her double many times overseas in adverts and I've performed for her sister and her mum and dad. It's And last, what, two years ago I was on the BBC on Christmas Eve to 10 million people doing Kylie. Wow. So I've done it a lot. I've done it a lot but not in COVID, not in lockdown. Have you... So, um? Have you got a particular favourite song of hers that you like to do or... Yeah. I'm like a Kylie jukebox, so I can sing any Kylie song from her back catalogue. But I'll give you 
I'll give you the Kylie voice because when she talks, she has this British voice that's a little bit Australian, a little bit Kylie, yes. a little bit British, a little bit Minogue, and that's how we talk when we're pretending to be a Minogue. I love that. Maybe we should that's change great. Lucy Holmes to Kylie Minogue for... <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. um, thank you so much, Lucy, for that. We're going to wrap things up in just a second, but before we do, last couple of questions. Uh, we're keen to know... I guess behind the scenes, no doubt, there's a lot at the radio station we probably don't get to see. Are there any sort of radio secrets or anything that go on that are really intriguing or interesting um, that you can share with us? I think a lot of people would assume we just sit down and turn on the mics and talk for three hours. And what people don't understand is there is so much work done behind the scenes for every single show to make it seem seamless. So it's like a duck on the water and underneath the legs are just going nuts. So we do so much preparation, so much planning uh, so that every show has a great balance of humour and depth and heart. And, and so that if you tune in over three hours, you're going to get something that's really great. So I think people are surprised that there's so much hard work. Um, but no, there's no real secrets to to radio. We just, we try and be as honest as we can. We try and be as fun as we can. Um, so I did go through a period of time where every time we went to the news at the top of hour, so like six, seven, eight, you have your cross to the news where they do the full news desk. Every time we went to the news, I thought I'm going to get fit. So every time there was like a 10 minute news break, I'd like drop to the floor and do push ups and jumping jacks. And that lasted like two days and I gave up, but <laughs> there's no real secrets. It's pretty much what you hear is what you get. Hey, it's a thought that counts with that sort of thing, isn't it? The push ups. So you've basically <laughs> done them. Um, and then uh, Last question, no doubt 13 years is a long time for little mishaps to happen. What is the most embarrassing moment for yourself that has happened live on air? I have so many and there are some I just can't repeat because they're too embarrassing <laughs> and I got in too much trouble. Um, <laughs> I have done some corkers. I've had the microphone left on. I was really angry one day. I was getting some, um, I was getting trolled by someone and I was pretty upset and the mic was left on at one point and I was, and you could hear me being a little bit upset in the background during a song, <laughs> um, which happens. I'm human. Uh, there was also, and, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, and she was very graceful about it, but I said the stupid, the stupidest thing I've ever said on air, I will tell you. Um, and she's a wonderful girl and I know she was, will have forgotten this, but there was a beautiful, beautiful singer called Rachel Leah Carr, who I think were, came runner up in The Voice like 10 years ago. And um, she was vision impaired and she was performing at Carols by Candlelight. And I performed at Carols by Candlelight um, with the Melbourne Gospel Choir for like, you know, 20 years. And we were interviewing her live on air and I said, oh, what is it? You know, I've, I said, I've been on stage. It's amazing. I said, how do you feel when you look out across the 30,000 people and see the candles? And she goes, Lucy, I'm vision impaired. And I was like, oh my goodness. And she had the grace to laugh it off. And I just wanted to die and sink into the floor. And I just could, I was so apologetic. She goes, it's so fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. You know, so that's probably the stupidest thing I've ever said on radio. That is gold. Oh, no. <laughs> I love that. Um, thank you for sharing that. We all need a bit of a, a laugh at the moment. Um, and then I guess fully wrapping things up, like we um, have seen the benefits of the light and um, positive radio. Um, I know I thoroughly enjoy it myself. And as a church, we would really love to be praying for yourself um, and uh, just want to know specifics, I guess, on what we could maybe be praying for, if there was anything in particular. Oh, that's lovely. That's really lovely. Um, I personally, I just love, you can just pray for me nonstop would be awesome. <laughs> just anything you feel led to pray, you pray it. <laughs> um, but also praying for the station. It has such a great... Uh, outreach. I mean, it reaches 1.2 million people and a lot of those people love the station because it's positive and they don't have a relationship with God, which is extraordinary. It's the largest 
mission and ministry in Melbourne. So if you can pray for the station, pray that it goes from strength to strength. If you can support it any way you can in prayers, when we do appeals, volunteering, because it reaches people in incredible ways. And we hear story after story after story, which is why I'm still there 13 years later, because the mission of it is extraordinary. People who are about to end it all then turned on the station and heard, uh, you know, words to live by, telling them to, you know, never give up or heard a song that changed their life. So the station does extraordinary work. It, it just, it saves lives. Um, so if you can be praying for the station, praying for all the staff, praying for the leadership and, and praying, because COVID has been hard on the station. Um, COVID has been hard on charities and the station is a not-for-profit. Um, and so if people could just pray that people do rise up and continue to keep it on the air, that would be amazing can do and guys at home that are watching this like i know that you will have heard what lucy's just mentioned and you'll be all on board with getting around the light and lucy herself as well in just i feel like at the moment in particular with everything that's going on we need that more than ever so lucy thank you so much for jumping on the call and having a chat to us um i've loved it and i've loved it yeah until next <laughs> time we'll uh, awesome <laughs> We'll um we'll see you next time. Thank you again. See ya. Bye guys. Thank you. Well, I don't know about you guys, but that was incredible. I love talking to Lucy. She was so easy to talk to as well. I feel like yeah, she just had so much to say. Um, had a lot of experience. I think she's incredible. I don't know about you, but it's kind of strange, like being able to respond. I've heard her voice on the radio so much, but we could actually interact. That have time. a conversation. It was great. But yeah. Um. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it. And um. Sadly, this could possibly be our last church chats for the year. So it's a bit sad. But um. Yeah. Let us know if you want more. Um. We'd love to do more. So let us know. <laughs> it is starting to wind down 2020 guys and leading into Christmas just around the corner as well. So there's a lot that's going to be coming from the church over the next few weeks leading into the Christmas season. Um, but we hope that you have loved church chats as much as we've loved doing it, um, that you feel a little bit more connected and we hope to see you real soon. See you soon.